gratitude. And we know that because as we're growing up, we have to be taught how to say thank you, how to be grateful to people. How many times when I think back, was I told, now make sure you thank grandma, or you thank grandpa, or you thank this one, or you thank that one, for what they gave you, or what they just said, or whatever. And, you know, eventually, it becomes ingrained that this is something that we ought to do, not because mom or dad said we better do it or else, but because we need to really be grateful when someone extends him or herself towards us in some way, giving us something or complimenting us or whatever it might be. But yet we see the gospel today, it looks like the Lord contradicts that whole idea. <clears throat> well, he says, you know, you think you should be thanked for doing what you're supposed to do? He said, instead you should say, we are worthless slaves. We've done no more than our duty. And it sounds, at least at first glance or at first hearing, that God is not grateful to us when we act according to his will. And I think that that's something that, that at times we may forget. And that is that we are called by God to this life. We have been called to new life by water and the spirit in our baptism. We have been made a new creation by what he has done for us. And really, the thanksgiving is supposed to come from us, from the recognition of what we could be contrasted with what we are. We could be no more valuable than, you know, creatures on this earth. We still would be made in God's image and likeness, but there would be one thing that we lacked, and that was a relationship with God as Father, with Christ as brother. That we are called into a family relationship. We are called into the body of Christ. We are given an identity that isn't a natural identity by the sheer fact of our birth. We have to be born again by water and the spirit to come to that identity. And once we have that identity, nothing and no one can ever take it away from us. We can try to deny it, we can try to escape from it, we can pretend it never happened, but on God's part, nothing is taken back. It's not irrevocable. It's not revocable. So, that ought to fill us with gratitude, understanding what God has done for us. And if you look at the second lesson today from the second letter to Timothy, Paul's writing this letter from when he's in prison. And uh, he's letting Timothy know, once again, the importance of the gift of faith that he's received and that he has to act on it. Now he's been appointed by Paul, ordained a presbyter, a leader in that community that, that he is over. And some even will say that, you know, he's been made a bishop. But he's there, and he's young. But Paul wants to remind him, you know, even though you're young, and even though the circumstances may be difficult, not only should you hang in there, but remember who you are. Remember the gift of faith that's been given to you. And it's not a gift that's, that's uh, ever going to be taken away from you. It's a gift that makes you strong and loving and wise. Different words, but yet the same idea from what's in our, our passage today. And he also reminds Timothy that he has to fan back into flame the gift that he received when 
Paul laid hands on him. That this is, again, God's gift that's been given. And that this gift needs to be appreciated and needs to be something that brings us to gratitude day in and day out. Because God didn't give it just for a moment, didn't give it just for the personal satisfaction of Timothy or any of us, but he gave it so that Timothy would be able to carry out the responsibility laid on him, but also to live out faithfully his initial faith in Jesus Christ as his Lord, as his Savior, as his Redeemer. So Timothy's told, you know, no matter what goes on, don't ever forget that. And make sure you come back again and again, day in and day out, to say thank you and to ask for that to be fanned into flame once again so you can carry out your work and be faithful to the end. What Jesus is driving at in the gospel today is that his apostles, his disciples have to see themselves as he sees himself, as a slave or a servant. He has come as the servant of the Father. He has come not to be served, but to serve. And the root of serve and the root of slave are the same. So he is called to be really a slave for humanity, to give his life a ransom for many, as, Saint, as he himself says in John's Gospel. Jesus comes to be the servant, and so his disciples are called to be servants. And if the apostles were waiting around for Jesus to thank them every day, for being there, they were going to wait a long time. Because they had to come to understand that Jesus wasn't receiving thanks from the Father for his faithfulness. Not in words, any way that were being expressed. And that everything that Jesus said and did was going to help lead him to the cross, which meant that his own weren't very grateful to him either for what he was doing. Even after his death and resurrection, not everybody flocked to the gospel. Not everybody flocked to become Christian. Some wanted to continue to deny that this ever really happened. And some people to this very day continue to deny it or ignore it, or whatever. So Jesus didn't expect to be thanked for doing what he was called to do. But he did it out of the depth of love that he had for the Father. He was obedient all the way to the cross for our sake, for the sake of all humanity for all time. So what he wants to tell disciples is, you have your call. You know who you are supposed to be. You know what you've been given. So do what you've been called to do. You've been called to love. You've been called to forgive. You've been called to, to share uh, life with other people. You've been called to, to be an example of generosity and kindness and compassion. So go and do it. What are you waiting for? And if we're waiting for God to reward us, he wants to remind us today that if we're doing what we do only because we want to go to heaven, or only because we think that God is going to give us something in the end, rather than doing it out of love and then forgetting about it, then we've kind of messed things up. He doesn't want us to say, think that we are worthless in the sense that people try to make us feel that way. But rather we have to latch on to that idea of 
We have done no more than was expected of us. We have done nothing more than our duty, what has been laid upon us. And we do it because we want to love God back the way God has loved us. And God gives the, the gift of everlasting life. God will give us the gift of eternal life with him because of a faithful life but that shouldn't be the only reason why we do anything that is laid upon us. We shouldn't work for the reward. We should work for the glory of God. And our salvation then comes because we have worked for God's glory. And so we are grateful. We are called to be grateful. Our very act of worship is called Eucharist from the Greek word, which means thanksgiving. It's our way of showing and saying to the Father that we are truly grateful. Yes, indeed, we are for everything that we have been given because we've been given life, we've been given faith, we've been given everything that's in our life. But especially when it comes to our relationship with God, this has been given to us as a gift. We, a gift that we want other people to have. A gift that we want to continue to move us and continue to form us to be more like Jesus. And the more we become like Jesus, the more selfless and less self-seeking we are called to become, and that we will become. Because he emptied himself so that he could enrich us. He gave up his life so that we could live. That we could live now with hope, with joy, and also with the hope and joy that comes from knowing that at the end of the journey, that God, in his faithfulness, will call us into the fullness of life with himself. But in the meantime, you and I, all of us, are servants, slaves, if you will, to the one who loves us, who doesn't mistreat us, doesn't put us down, but continues to call us to imitate him, to serve him, to love, to serve, to care, to be compassionate, forgiving, merciful, day in, day out. And in this Eucharist this morning, again, even that little bit of bread, like the little mustard seed talked about in the Gospel, and that little sip of wine conveyed to you and me the very life of the one who gave his life up for us. That little bit gives us everything Jesus can possibly give to us for our salvation and our strength and the encouragement to carry out the mission of trusting.